close-up shot of the dagger. Another day in the crew of the man who killed my father. My childhood memories. <laughs> I think it takes a little bit more than water. That explains a lot about why they have fleas and lice. The agony of this. Just being stuck with this whole crew. Nothing you can do. Nowhere else to go. No other purpose. But yeah, Asclad has definitely taken notice. And history! I really had the place around it. In 1002 AD, bath time was ruined for everyone. They never bathed again. My enemies are across the sea. That's Erwin Smith. <laughs> Where have we heard this story before? Yes. In order to be truly free. Birds, do you even know who the real enemy is? It's birds. Rumbling! <laughs> In the beginning of season four, we're gonna totally switch sides and get the English perspective. Universally love child soldiers. We can only hope that Thorfinn appears a little bit better than Eren. He has a better father figure than Eren did. Episode six, the journey begins. Yeah, that turns out that was just a prologue. Everybody wants to talk about the glories of war and, you know, just kill women and children. Nobody wants to do the dirty work of rowing the boats. We have reached paradise. You want to talk given your lice and fleas problem. I'm sure they don't smell great. Remember that time he was fantasizing about doing all this? This was his dream. He's still doing this. He's still making his own food. <laughs> it's always gold. It's always going to be about the gold. And the women. I'm really curious about the direction of Aslad just because it could just be that this is the life he wants. He just wants to live as a leader of a roaming gang of pirates, pillaging stuff, getting gold, and getting women. But this is not an easy life for, for anyone. And in a show where it's been suggested that there's this sort of promised land that everyone is dreaming of, I wonder if he has any kind of larger goal. I might be overreading this, but he seems a little bit weary. I mean, he's good at what he does. He obviously takes some satisfaction from it, but it seems almost like his strategy is just to keep the game long enough, keep his men happy while he secretly has other thoughts. I don't know. He doesn't care. He'll do what he wants. Oh my, what the heck? Is he double crossing them? No, is this England? Is the deal still on? And just like that, we're in a very weird way aligned with this terrible crew of mercenaries against the true enemy, the English. I swear, if this were a tactical RPG, the Viking classes by default would get a plus five defense boost to arrow damage. Is this where he, he gets aligned with them? Speaking of alignment with terrible people. Thorfinn is the audience. He's just so lost, this kid. But also, I mean, he's fighting for his life. Defining moment. Oh my god! Holy crap. He saved his life. I feel like we're about to see his first kill. It's not gonna be this kid though. Oh wow! I thought someone was gonna save him. Whoa. Oh no, that seals it, doesn't it? This is a just, a, oh man. It's such a huge turning point for him mentally. Counter to his father's wishes, but also it just makes him a hero in his crew's eyes. There's no way he can comprehend all this. <laughs> Asklad knows. There's a lot more coming out there than just his feelings over that killing. That was weeks or months of just rage. He just went full into it. I guess it's just a channel for his, his anger. 
I don't know what else he could do. Oh, he's growing up. Time skip. Time montage of death. He's got a talent for it. And he's gonna be recognized for his aptitude. <laughs> it's so bizarre. It's such a bizarre mentorship. I guess this is their world. But he hasn't forgotten what happened. This is such a complex relationship. I love it. I mean, I think he's going to tell himself that his goal is to kill Asklad, but will he be able to even do it if it comes to it? I mean, so much time has passed in the crew. What is that, a signature? That is trademark? It's so much more visceral to watch him do it. This heroic journey is starting off in a, <laughs> in a very interesting way. <laughs> starting off as this, like, ruthless child assassin. At least you gotta go down before you can go up. It's almost like a like an anti-hero montage, you know what I mean? Typically, at this point in the show, I feel like the protagonist has aligned himself with some good cause and is struggling to get competent so that he can rise above it and, like, do good things. This is him increasing his ability and power and finding his place in the world by sliding into the evil that he so resented at the beginning. Well, that's not entirely true. He always sort of embraced his world and he wanted to be a warrior. He wanted to be a soldier and he thought that was, you know, the highest thing he could be. But it's definitely in opposition to his father, his father's ideals and what his father wanted for him. And probably also largely how he feels. You know, there's a obvious part of this that is just him burying a whole range of emotions that are just too complex for him to fathom right now because there's nothing he can really do about it. There's no way he was ever going to process Thor's death as something that was good, you know, or be able to understand the depth of Thor's values and goodness. And there's no other place to look to as a source of where to go or what to do just because this just is so life-defining and he ended up on Asklad's boat and with their crew, and that was basically his survival from that point on. Not just physically, but emotional survival, you know, fixating on something to keep him going. I mean, nominally, if you asked him, it would be about getting revenge on Asclad, but it's clear it's a lot more than that as well. That is kind of just a, a figurehead, you know, it's an image to put in front of him to get him through something that is just traumatic and devastating, that he doesn't know what else to do with being a literal child, which is just life in general, even if, you know, most people don't experience it at this level of trauma and violence. But if you think about the helplessness that people are born into, coming up in the world at first, it's not about any kind of reflection on goodness or life, it's about survival and things you need to take on in order to blend in. The danger for Thorfinn is the deeper you go into it, the harder it is to get out. And if there's any dissonance between what you actually feel and what you're kind of making yourself to do because you, you're you afraid of the alternative or you don't know how to do anything else, that eats at you in really insidious ways and it's hard to even know what the cause is. It's hard to identify it. Anime running, 10 out of 10. Oh no, that just crosses a line. Everything else he did before that was okay, but the dogs, unacceptable. <laughs> How long has this conversation been going on? We just got that cut, but she's been talking nonstop. Oh, there's seen some stuff. It might be switching sides earlier than I thought. We didn't even have to wait until the beginning of season four, part one. This is, uh, what's his name? Slash's father's village. See that? See that? This is a kind dog. You treat dogs with kindness. He looks like a good boy. I don't need anything from you dirty English scum of the earth. The universal language of peace. Food on an empty stomach. Exactly. Oh, are they speaking? Wait, what? It's hard to tell because we're all speaking Japanese. There are no enemies. We have to save our children from the forest. Fleas and lice got you too? <laughs> oh, they do. Oh my god. That is an advanced case of fleas. <sighs> Did she lose her son? Yeah. Okay, I was about to ask. Yeah, he really doesn't understand. <laughs> if nothing interrupted, this is gonna be great. He could just live here. And this jerk rolls in. <laughs> 
大使閣下の聖騎兵を二人殺している手だれだ左腕にヤギズを追っている I'll kill you too. それはお前の子かええそうです末のジョンの子か何か But he can unravel this lie so quickly, he just has to ask the kid a question. <laughs> well, very vigorous work. <laughs> Crack that case. This woman has a lot of depth. She's taking a big risk for him. She's missing a son, yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. We don't snitch on our family. Who? He, he, run, he runs away? His Japanese English is not great. His name isn't John, though. <laughs> Maybe she was taking that boy thing a little too seriously. He's like, who the hell is John? Just for a moment, just for a brief, brief, fleeting moment, we had a family, but that's not his destiny. Oh, they're waiting for him. Very subtle, very subtle messaging system they have going. Oh no, does that mean he brings danger for the, the woman and her daughter? My little Johnny. He's trying to spare them. I don't know. I don't know. When you try to save your kids from the forest and they, they just they go all the way into it. Ooh, he brought them into the village. It wasn't just pick up. Right, I see. That was his mission. It's to clear out the guards. Create a landing zone for them. More things to bury. More things to push deep down. I understand the screaming in the opening a lot better. Oh, God, that's awful. That lady was just way out of her depth. This show is so full of interesting choices that kind of defy the norm. You know, typically that ends up going well. Even if he doesn't stay there, he takes something away from it and the saviors or whatever, the, the parental or mentor figures get positive treatment. But this lady's kindness was just totally obliterated and overpowered by just the force of the Vikings. Really making her look pitiable, fragile, ultra sympathetic, almost childlike herself. You know, she's a lost soul in the equation as much as Thorfinn is. It's super tragic. This poor lady who is actually really wise in her way, trying to do some good, trying to take care of a lost kid, seeing something of a son in him, just gets trampled. The goodness just gets trampled by the times, I guess, by a pirate force that rolls in from the tides that her very son invited in. And there's something so real about that too. Like he's just a kid and he cannot comprehend it at, at a real level. I mean, he he's getting it. It's in there somewhere, but it's gonna kind of rest in his soul somewhere, in his heart, in his memories, and then just sort of be there inactive for a long time, just festering as this thing that is bothering him that he just can't deal with yet. He can't look at it. He has to just brush it to the side. For this episode, Thorfinn, for reasons I can't even fully articulate, feels like such a real kid. I think there's certain dynamics, especially for certain certain kids, where their values sort of run away from you. You know, they they form on their own based on their their environment, their pressure, their peers, or whatever. If that ends up being a greater authority in a key sense than the actual authority that is looking out for them there's often no hope in that situation it's only gonna go that way I understand the feeling of losing a kid's mind and heart to something that you can't control and then realizing suddenly that you can't rest on the power of being an adult or an older figure a lot of that relies on a contract that the kid has accepted and if the kid has rejected it for something else I think it's always gonna be for something else then there's no way to get that back without crossing key lines yourself and from there I think the only thing you can do is just to care for them and do your best it creates such a clear image having this woman who represents just traditional family and maternal love, open-minded thinking, kindness, warmth, just be disappeared by that invading Viking platoon. That's the kind of thing that's going to haunt him later, but it, he's not even going to think about it for a while, probably. This is such a fascinating episode and fascinating arc, and I think a really bold choice having him ally with his enemies. He doesn't realize how deep he's in, and he's not going to realize until it's actually time to confront Asclad. If he even does, I mean, he might end up spending more time
time with Asgard than he did with his own family. At that point, who even are you? Are you Thor's son or are you Asgard's assassin? You know. I mean, speaking of Attack on Titan and Erwin Smith, who is the real enemy? Is a great and fitting question for this show as well.